Awesome. Well, welcome to today's free webinar on shadow work, everybody. So I feel like you guys will find this one a bit interesting. So how are we all feeling today? Linda, lack of energy, tired. Well, it's a good thing that you're here then today, Linda. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's webinar. So I thought I would discuss on what's called shadow work. So type a Y or an N in the text chat if you're familiar with it or not. If you or if you have a basic understanding of shadow work. Okay, yeah, Linda does have an understanding, yeah. Okay, awesome. But yeah, I mean shadow work in simple terms. So in simple terms, basically, shadow work is making sure that you're managing and that you're controlling certain aspects of yourself that you know are there. Because I mean, uh, to some degree, all of us have a darker part in our personalities. So whether we'll admit it or not, we all have a dark side. We all have darker shadows and personalities of ourselves. But the key thing is to make sure that they don't go out of control and that we don't kind of enhance them like 10 times, if that makes sense. Because, I mean, there are many different types of shadows and many different types of archetypes that we operate in. So one example would be like what's called the perennial martyr. So, I mean, someone who would operate in that naturally, if they don't manage that, and if they don't keep it under control, what will happen is they'll become very guilt tripping and very emotionally abusive type of people. And you'll also find that they'll be very guilt tripping. And that you'll, and you'll find too that, that they'll be very big rescuers. So they're always trying to force their kind of values and beliefs and trying to help other people but they're just doing it in a very unhealthy and very toxic kind of way, just as an example. And then other ones would be like the victim, which is self-explanatory. They're energy vampires and they all want to blame something outside of them instead of taking personal responsibility. And or like, or maybe like a certain love for money, like all for money, if that's strong there then if that's out of control then that's how then that's how you can start to manifest all kinds of scammers and challenges in your life when it comes to money and linda said drama triangle well that's correct yes that's the another part of shadow work linda because i mean the drama triangle is a very vicious cycle you've got the rescuer the victim and the persecutor and it's the way it works in basic terms would be this. So you've got a victim who's in disempowerment and they're blaming everyone else outside of them, everything else. Then you've got the rescuer who feels so bad for them that they're trying to heal them or to help them. And then you've got, on the other hand, you've got the persecutor, which, which kind of ends up in both roles because the victim will persecute the rescuer because they don't feel like they're being they're doing enough for them and then the rescuer will in turn persecute the victim because the the rescuer feels like they're not giving back enough and they're just sucking the energy and the life out of them so you can imagine it's not a nice cycle and too many people do this on the daily whether that's with at their work or with their family members with their friends just different people like that and that's why every day you want to be working on yourself and doing clearings on yourself every day because by doing that it keeps it under control and it also keeps you clean it's basically like a spiritual house that you're keeping tidy because i mean it's a constant maintenance it's like your house if you stop cleaning your house i mean it would stay good for a little while but then uh, after a while once that's over it, the dust and everything else will pile up again and it will come back to how it was previously, if not even worse in most scenarios. So that's the case when it comes to this shadow work. The moment we become lazy with it and we kind of skip a day or whatever, then that's the moment that we can fall into trouble. Now, there are times in our life where we will be called to allow it to settle and to integrate and like just maybe 
go to the beach or take a walk or whatever to allow it to process before you start the clearing again. But, but when, but if you're not processing and all, and if you're good to go, then you want to be doing the energy work and doing that shadow work and making sure that the certain aspects of yourself and your personality don't become too excessive because anything in excessive behavior never ends well, as we know, and as we've been talking about, because when you don't do shadow work, I mean, you'll, you'll start to manifest all kinds of shit. So, I mean, like the biggest one is that you can be the most talented and the most gifted person in the world with a lot of ability. But if you have too many unresolved shadows in your, in your personal life and stuff that you haven't sorted out, that can, that can in turn actually make you not be able to exercise your full potential and that you're only using a certain portion of it. Then Linda says, is inner child work a form of shadow work? Uh, yes, it is very much so. And that's one of the most important forms of shadow work that we want to be doing. Because, I mean, well, in some form, one way or another, all of us, when we were children in our early years, we all experienced something traumatic or we all experienced something bad and, and challenges and hardships because that's just the way life is. And, th and that's the reality. We need challenges and hardships, as we were discussing last week, to help us to grow and become stronger and to knock any weakness that's within us. But, and the inner child work can be excruciating. It can be very painful because you're going all the way back to when you were that young and when you were more vulnerable. Because children, as we know, are very open to energies and they're uncorrupted. But as we know, life gets messy and then then shit starts to fall into the chakras, into our auras, into everything. Because you'll even notice that children, as an example, speak their truth, unlike adults, and they're not afraid to do it. And so, yes, I mean, inner child work is a very important part of, of shadow work. Because if you don't heal that inner child, then, then, you're, then that means that you'll still be carrying around a lot of trauma. And a lot of stuff from when you were that young because it's all good to clear things in the present and things that happened to us a few years ago or so but if we don't go all the way back all the way back to birth and even before birth like in past lives then that can be a major setback in us achieving that transformation and actually creating something great and magnificent for ourselves uh, and the other thing is you'll find that the benefits far outweigh the, the drawbacks when it comes to this shadow work. You'll be much more liberated. You'll be much happier. You'll be more fulfilled. You won't feel like that there's voids that you need to try to fill. And you'll also be much more energized and you'll, you'll be much stronger and you won't tolerate any bullshit and you'll be able to uh, operate with an open heart instead of it being closed instead of it being very hard and that kind of thing be able to read into yourself and certain people um the best the best thing about shadow work is that you can act you can use it to help someone or something beyond yourself so we do it on ourselves first and then we in turn help the planet and we help other people to be able to achieve their own inner greatness and this is why it's extremely frustrating, like with this whole world, like the way people are behaving and being and just being dumb cunts. Because, I mean, people and humans have extraordinary capabilities and have that capability to do great things. But instead, they'd rather just wallow in their own sorrows and their own bullshit and just the stuff that, that they basically went through and not dealing with their shadows and their personal stuff. Because the personal, because your personal life will very much translate into your work, into your purpose, into, into you, and it affects everything. So even just type in the text chat, which if, you, if there's any shadows that come to mind for you guys, like just type which shadow you know that needs to be dealt with and that could use more work. So I know for myself at the moment, like the one, the, the, the shadow I've work, been working on the most lately has, um, and have been for cer a certain number of months has been 
communicating my emotions more effectively and, and communicating them instead of kind of keeping it to myself and being too private about them. Linda, overthinking, assuming the worst and making other people wrong. I'm aware of it a lot better now. Well, that's, and that's the first step is to be self-aware of your own inner shadows and your own darkness. And once you're self-aware, you, you then feel and acknowledge it. And as you're feeling and acknowledging it, you then, and as you release it from your system, that's the moment you then find the solution or you, you look, you start thinking creatively on how you can fix it. Because the truth is these problems and all, they can be fixed a lot quicker than you think. It's just that while you're going through it is when it feels like hell and when it's excruciating. And that's when you call in support as well. Because the reality is, no matter how strong or bulletproof we can be on the outside and, and as people, the truth is, whether we like it or not, we all need a community or we all need someone to lean on when we um, are going through challenges like that. And obviously, it doesn't mean we have to be crybabies to the whole world. It simply just means that we need to find someone we trust that we can do it with. Like whether that be friends, whether that be family, whether that be listening to music, writing in a journal or anything like that. In some form or another, it's important that we have that support and we have other energies to lean on because, well, they in turn can give you advice and they can actually help to guide you through the scenario. And I know that I myself have, have got, have made sure I have a great network of support around me with my family and with my friends and also with journaling or listening to music, just stuff like that. And Linda said, and helping others that is being the rescuer. I realize that I'm not responsible for other people's life. Yes. And that's a great realization there, Linda, because the last thing we want to be doing when we're in this healing energy work is rescuing other people because that not only and it bleeds us dry, but it, it's also stopping them from creating something magnificent for ourselves because it's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing to help other people, but it's how we go about it is what counts. And, and by being the rescuer, we're just engaging in excessive behavior. And again, it's never going to end well for you or for the other person. And um, everyone is responsible for their own journey and their own health. And, uh, and really, I mean, if they're, if they're actually seeking to change and better themselves and are asking you for support and advice, that's when we will do, that's when we give them our absolute best and we'll do, and we do everything in our power to be able to help them. Because I mean, uh, I, myself, I have a lot of time for people who want to better themselves and are seeking to change and are willing to face what's going on, even if it's very painful. Okay, so now what we'll do is share my screen to bring up the code for the clearing. Okay, so is there any questions, comments before we get into the clearing? Linda, all good, no questions. Okay, no worries. Okay, so now everyone just focus on this code now. And now what I'd, what I'd like you to do is just inhale the code into your shadow aspects, the deeper shadow aspects that you feel need work right now. So just with your intention, you can do that as well. And just imagine it there and close your eyes and really just take those deep breaths and really feel and acknowledge those shadows and what's going on and really give yourself that permission to own that part of you, that, it, that that is a part of you. And allow yourself to be authentic.
we now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. And we now call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron, and Christ and Mother Mary. Mary, so only those who align with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, or anything else related now. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that each person here be cleared, be cleared using this energy clearing code to clear any negative dark aspects of their shadows and the parts of them that are there, whether that be the perennial martyr or a victim or a rescuer or any of these others. So now with your intention set, just really picture your shadows, the ones you're, that, uh, that you're thinking of right now, the ones you're feeling right now. And really just feel and acknowledge them and, re and really speak them out and be honest with yourself and allow them to release from your system. And we also clear any karmic imprints or aspects from each person here of these highlighted shadows and these excessive behaviors here. Now we clear those and release them from each person here from their system and help them to get it out of that now to Asia in today. And help each person here come to terms with their shadows and who they are. And help them to accept and to love themselves and bring in that omni self love. we now activate that strength and um, and clear out any weaknesses or shed off any weakness from each person here and any softness and help them to transform their weaknesses into their strengths and we now bring them back into balance and we now pour in that golden liquid light and send in the love from the higher mother and father And we clear out any other dark energies surrounding it or sabotages stopping them from being able to, to release it and face it and evaporate it with the golden liquid light and burn it up. really just bring each person here back into balance and pour in that golden liquid light and send in the love from the higher mother and father and clear out any dramas or any negative voices or clutter or chatter in their mind 
or any thoughts or doubts, any negative ones. Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that clearing? Linda, I feel there's a strong energy from the back of my head to all over my body. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's very powerful, Linda. Yeah, so that's your strength and that's the strong energy activating in you now. Because really, I mean, the key to being strong is having the soft heart. Because the softer your heart is, the stronger and the tougher you will be. Because we can be soft-hearted and be strong, uh, and we can be both. It's just because uh, we don't want to be too much in either one. So now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate that. Okay, so is there any final questions or comments before we end for today? Linda, thank you so much. I enjoyed the session today. Yeah, me too, Linda. I mean, this, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about myself, actually, is the shadow work and really just doing the constant daily work on it and allowing it to clear and really keeping that balance. So, yeah, I agree. It was a great one today. So thanks again, everyone. It was another great session, another great clearing. And as always, if you ever want to chat further, on doing work with me or doing these kind of clearings and mentoring uh, just email me at william at the awakening within.net which i'll type in the text chat so that's it everyone thanks again for coming and i'll see you all next time bye for now